I thought I'd try doing voiceovers to the video, so let's see how we go. So this is me testing, hi, <laughs> stripping and rebuilding a Smith's heater fan or blower. So this is an old sort of almost seized up fan. It, it doesn't spin very well at all. Rubbish. Uh, I've got it wired up to uh, the positive side of the battery and then the resistor goes through the earthing side of the circuit. If you've got the wire on the furthest side of the resistor, that, that'll be your fan speed too. So I'm just going to tap that on the battery. Uh, nothing's happening. That's because there's not enough power getting to the motor to actually turn it because it's that seized up. So let's take the direct feed, which is actually bypassing the resistor. So this will be your fan speed um, one. This will be full speed. It is turning, but it's rubbish. It's not going to blow my hair. Horrible. It's not whining, but it's just rubbish. It's not turning fast at all. Probably my cat fart blows more than that. So that was a wag of the finger there to say no, 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 not not a good fan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this one down. I've already stripped one, painted one that's ready to rebuild. So the one I'm rebuilding at the end isn't actually this fan. <laughs> Pegs, handy for holding wires onto batteries. So cup of tea, I believe. My Friday night dinner mug. Shalom. <laughs> yes, tea's good. Uh, so there we are. We're going to undo those two. Oh, no, no, we're not. <laughs> we're going to take that off. We're going to take the fan off first, the uh, propeller. There's a metal clip in there. It's a bit of a pain. I use these side cutters to sort of grip it, twist it, pull it off. I can't really show it in the video how I do it, but... Just persevere with it. Don't cut it. Don't break it. You'll be able to sort of stretch it a little bit with these cutters. There we go. Popped off. Now the worst part of the job for me is getting this blimmin' propeller off. It won't budge. I tried to speed the video up here because it was just taking me ages. Pull in, pull in. Prize in. It just does not want to come off. Plastic defeats me. Pull it. No, I just don't want to budge, you know. That metal clips off. You still don't want to come. Keep pulling, pulling, pulling. I mean, this is, this is sped up. It was really slow. Here it comes, here it comes. Come on. Using my feet like a monkey. Shitty shoes. There we go. Fantastic. Sorry, it's all fast still. So just check it. Check it's not cracked. You haven't buggered it up. It's fine. You can use it again. Brilliant. Let's have some tea. Um, <laughs> so that shaft is a bit rusty. Rubbish. Doesn't, can't even turn the fan by hand. 5 16th spanner, I think that is. I'm going at turbo speed here, so I can't blimmin' see what I'm doing. Undo those nuts at the end. They're only nuts. Little rusty nuts. Okay, yep, shake the washers off. Come on. Little washers are anti-rattle washer things. I've got new ones in the shed. But you can keep the old ones and use those again. Now we want to take that back cover off, but it's normally seized. So run off, get screwdriver, run back. I cut that because that, that's quite a long way to my toolbox. Just give it a little... <coughs> Like that, and a little <laughs> there, and that should be enough to pull it off. <laughs> okay, ping. There we go, covers off. That reveals the brushes little carbon fibre brushes that brush against, I believe, a, a copper surface. Now, in there's a little ball bearing, it looks like. Oh, yeah, look out for the little washers, keep them. They're weird little washers. In there's a little, little round metal ball. 
encased in there. See that's turning, that's turning lovely. That's a good one that. That's in there. I would just grease that up. I wouldn't take it out, nothing. Just grease it up. Happy days. That's ready to roll. Little springs off the threads. Take them, put them safe. They hold the brush plate down onto the shaft. Well, look, I'm getting my gloves off for this. It's getting serious. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that blooming thing. Just chuck that. Bye-bye. <laughs> right. Yes, there's little brass or copper wires that hold these brushes sort of under tension with little springs. Try and sort of push those back. Bit awkward, but... Try and push them back and slide it off. There you go, look. See, those brushes have got loads of meat left on those. I can reuse those. But I'm sure you can get new ones because they're the same as what you might find in an alternator or a dynamo or a start motor. I definitely see them in the dynamo. Probably not in the start motor. What matter that? They're definitely in the dynamo. Uh, oh, yeah, running off again. Cut. <laughs> Contact cleaner. That's what I would use to just clean those up. You, you don't want to be WD-40 in those because they'll get, you know, they'll collect the rubbish. You just want to clean them, really. Clean it, clean it, clean it. Let that drip dry over there. Yeah, don't put dirty hands back in your gloves because it's disgusting. Mm -hmm. There we are. So that's my little alien ship inside its cocoon. And if we just bash it out, bash it out. There we go. There's the alien ship. Lots of copper winding. See that ball? That ball should not be on there. It should be in there. Like the other one I showed you. A bit Blue Peter style. Here's one I made earlier. See, I've got the ball. Oh, sorry, there's big magnets in there. I've got the ball in there. Turning, lovely, ready to go. That one, no ball, not ready to go. So, first thing we need to do, put the nice bit away. Right, we need to get that ball off that shaft. So I've just put a bit of contact cleaner on that. That was a waste of time. So I jump off. Right, pipe wrench. I think that's what you call it, a pipe wrench. Right, that's what I call it. I think people call it other things. Uh, yeah, that's not happening. Run off. WD-40. There you go, that's better. Don't get the WD-40 on the windings, though. Just get it on that little ball. So that ball's not meant to be there. You need to slide that off the shaft. So I just sort of work it back and forth, back and forth. Trying to work it off the shaft. And this took me ages as well. I tried to speed it up. But I think it sped up most of the video because <laughs> I'm an amateur. Oh, sandpaper. Yeah, that can help. Sandpaper off the rusty bits on the shaft. And the ball's more likely to slide down it. It went halfway, well, over halfway, but it's just, just on the end there, it won't budge. Yeah, work it, work it, work it. 100 miles an hour. <laughs> I don't work that fast, really. Is she off yet? Nope, still on there. Come on. I feel like I could have cut this bit, but... I sort of wanted you to see how long it blooming takes me. Here she comes. Oh. Pop. Ta-da. There we are. Look out for the little washers. There should be four. I think it's four of those. Four little washers. Stick them somewhere safe. There's your ball. That ball's got to go in that hole. But it won't go in that hole. 
I'm going to have to get the hole out first. <laughs> that's what I did with that one. That's the, that's the good one I made. So now you've got to try and get that, oh, I call it the cat's bum hole. Sorry if I shouldn't be saying that on YouTube, but it's, I don't actually know the proper name for it. It's a star washer thing. So that needs to come out of there. Now this took me blooming ages as well, because I was such an amateur trying to hammer it out with a firmin, the stabby stabby with a screwdriver. Yeah, that's not going to get it out, Alex. Stabby, stabby. No. Um, stabby, stabby, and then whack, whack with the pliers. No, no, that didn't work. Stabby, stabby, whack, whack. Yeah. Screwdriver and pliers don't make good hammer and chisel. <laughs> just, just note that. Don't, don't do what I did. I didn't actually get to film the part where I got it out. I just look here we go, it's cut it's cut to the scene where it's actually out. As you can see there I've got my chisels and punches. And I just got a proper hammer and a chisel and managed to knock it out. It's a little bit deformed, but you can bend it back. See I'm just bending it back into shape. Once you sort of get in there and play with it, you'll understand what I'm on about. See, that ball's got to sit in there, and it sort of springs against those little teeth. But it sort of holds it in there. And then what you'll have to do is get the ball in there, and then sort of hammer that back in, basically, that bit. The cat's bum hole. Yeah, that's all your bits once you've stripped it apart, and that's what you'll have left. This is all the, the clean bits, all been painted up, ready to be put back together. Okay, it's put back together time. Ooh, magic! This is the bit I always like, putting the shiny things together. So that, that little bolt there has got like a hexagonal sort of part to it, so it um, sort of recesses in the casing so it doesn't spin and they've got little clips in the side of that unit there amongst the magnets there's massive magnets in there that are quite strong just you don't want grease on those just make sure they're clean see those magnets in there just make sure they're not greasy you don't want them greasy check that ball in there is moving freely i put a load of grease around it but not too much because you don't want grease getting on the magnets and things really. There's your spaceship. And I know what happens here because I, I actually did it. It lubricated my shaft. Ooh. Lubricated it. Oh yeah, make sure that's clean there as well. No grease. Give it a wipe if you're not sure. I use that contact cleaner stuff. It's great. Right, you want to stick that in that ball. And the magnets will try and steal it from you. But get that shaft into that socket. Put it in there. And then... <laughs> And then, <laughs> I know it's coming, so I'm laughing. <laughs> I put my thumb up. <laughs> and then pause. <laughs> mm. Yes. Well done. <laughs> you forgot the washers. So pull the spaceship back out. There should be two of your little friends. I don't know why there's two. I don't know what they're made of. But there's, there seems to be two there. That's where they were. So I put them back where I found them. And that's the end you want to shove in there. So you've got the copper contact bit sticking out towards you. 
lovely. That's better. Those other two washers, again, I found on there. So just chuck them back in. And that's where I found them. That's where they'll go. Greasy fingers. So this is our brushes. <laughs> Obviously, I don't expect you to use your feet as a vice. But uh, if you can find some way of holding that. So you've got two hands to pull the brushes back. And then slide it over the brass contacts. Or the copper contacts. I don't but I'm not a scientist. I just pull things apart and put them back together again. It's metal. It's orange metal rubbing on those brushes. Lovely. Right, this outer this is, oh, I'm yawning. I'm boring myself. This is the thing that helps it bolt into the heater box. So there'll be different types of these for different cars, I would imagine. Different mountings. Same fan, different mountings. So this one has a little slot, slot in the casing and a little notch in that. See in there? So it can only fit in one way, basically. You could probably put it in upside down by mistake, but you'll work it out. That's the way it's meant to go. Bolt heads facing towards you. Bit of grease on those threads. <laughs> Lovely. Get your little springy things. Stick them over the threads. Now you will find your threads will try and poke back through, so try and put your fingers over those like a piano. Just sort of holding them in so they don't push back through. So there's your little springy things. That's the casing. Doesn't matter which way the casing goes, as long as the terminals stick out the little holes. Don't think you can do it wrong. I'll put a bit of grease on that end shaft there as well, because that's got to go in the ball bearing socket inside that lid. It's got a spin in there. Now I'm getting it all lined up. Getting those threads through the holes. Push it down. Make sure it's pushed down all the way. And you're still holding those studs in. So you can put your little anti-rattle washer. Any little nut back on. I couldn't find my new nuts, so I've had to use these rusty old nuts. It's a bit embarrassing. Never mind. They'll do. They'll do for the video. <laughs> do them up. Don't do them up too tight. I don't know why I viciously shook it then. I have no idea. Violent. Oh. Yeah, the video cut off then, sorry. So yeah, basically you just give that a good shove down. Make sure the shaft still turns in its socket. If it doesn't turn in its socket, it's out of alignment. So just pop the cover back off. And check it spinning again freely in there. It's not stuck. Again, don't don't do those nuts up too tight. They don't need to be tight. 
So putting the plastic fan back on. This is really easy. It's easier than getting it off. I'll tell you that much. So when you put it on, you'll you'll see that it won't go flush against the fan, um, against the motor. There'll be a slight gap where it sits comfortably. See, it's easy to get on and off now. Bugger. That's your metal thing. Hopefully you didn't ruin it. <laughs> it sounded so harsh. So push that metal thing onto that nipple. Give it a helping hand with a screwdriver. Just sort of push it down into its recess. There you go. So it's back on there. And then you just push it on. Pop. That's it. Do the old yanking test and make sure it won't come off. And there you go. You'll see again there's a nice little sort of gap in there. Yeah. Yep, just check it. It doesn't come come off because that would be devastating. That's perfect. Time to test it. I think. Mmm, pegs and wires, magic. <laughs> oh yeah, on the fan there should be an arrow pointing which way it should turn. Uh, you don't know which is positive or negative. Just plug it in and see which way it turns. If it turns the wrong way, switch the wires around. And then it'll turn the right way. So I'm pegging, pegging me positive on. Not with that peg though, because that peg's rubbish. Purple peg for the win. So that's me positive on. And then my negative's got the um, resistor on it. So, looks like I'm going to try out speed 2. Now this is annoying of my my fault. I, I put the camera, so you can't really see the fan action. But that was speed 2. And remember speed 2 wasn't working before. Speed 2's working, it looks great. It feels great, you know. You should... Especially when I put speed one on, you should see my hair blowing. So this is speed one. Ooh. I tried to get it in the picture, but my filming skills were very poor. But speed one's doing a great job at blowing my hair. That's really going for it. I definitely wouldn't want to put my finger in that right now. Or my nose. Or my hair. Get your hair away from it, woman. Look at that. It's like being in a film. Marilyn Monroe, eat your heart out. Let's put speed two on again. And you can see my hair blowing there as well, but more... More gentle. <laughs> speed one again. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> yeah, my arm got in the way. Why on earth did I film like that? So, camera's good. A camera... Fan, fan's good. There's your Smith sticker. This is actually an old sticker. See, that's the positive. The single line without the resistor is positive. So I checked and it is spinning the right way. So put the sticker on. So the arrow pointing to positive is pointing towards the single wire there because whatever way we've got this set up now, the fan is uh, spraying the right way. And there we are. Thanks for watching. Bye.